Thank you for joining me today for our midweek study this week. Uh, We're continuing in the book of Deuteronomy. Remember, this is Moses giving his last instructions to the Israelites before they enter into the promised land. They had approached the promised land. They were afraid to go in. The spies gave a bad report. So God made them go back into the wilderness until that generation died off. And then a new generation would go into the promised land. So God is using Moses to give instructions to the Israelites so that they will be ready to serve him faithfully and stay pure and true to him and him alone when they move into the promised land. We're up to Deuteronomy chapter 7, and this is where God challenges the Israelites to stay separated from the world. I want you to know that this is exactly what Jesus told the Christians, that we are to live separate from the world, that we are sojourners in this land, uh, that we have a home in heaven, not on this earth. So this is very much connected to what Jesus said to us. But listen to how God instructs the Israelites to stay separate. It begins in Deuteronomy 7, verse 1. It says, When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering to possess and drives out before you many nations, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites, seven nations larger and stronger than you, and when the Lord your God has delivered them over to you and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally. Now we look at this in today's feel-good society and everything's about feelings, and we say, oh, that's terrible. God told the Israelites to kill off these seven tribes these seven nations completely that were already in the promised land when they got there. And he he wanted them to do that so that they could remain pure. If any of these still were in the promised land, then they would pull the Israelites away from worshiping the one true God. We as Christians today have been taught to be soft about other religions, that we're supposed to accept everything and anything going on in the world today, and that it's all okay. There are even these homogenized or blended, whatever you want to call them, religions that try to combine Christianity and Buddhism and all these others together, and it just comes out to be a mess. And people are lost in that religion, separated from the one true God. God did not want that for his people. He has spent two generations with them in the, in the wilderness to get them ready to go into this promised land. Now he wants them to go in and possess it for themselves, and stay pure and true to him. He goes on in verse 2 to say, Make no treaty with them, and show them no mercy. Do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons, or take their daughters for your sons. For they will turn your children away from following me, the one true God, to serve other gods. And the Lord's anger will burn against you, and will quickly destroy you. Do you see God's reasoning here? You've got to remember that God is pure, that God is right all the time, that he is the one that sets the standard of truth, and he wants his people to stay pure and separated from anything and everything else that's going on in the world concerning other religions because he does not want them putting any false god before him. And he said, I don't want your children marrying their children. I want them to stay separate from these others, because they'll pull you away from the one true God. He goes on in verse uh, 4, he says, verse 3, do not intermarry with them, do not give your daughters to their sons, or take their, their, their daughters for your sons, for they will turn your children away from following me to serve other gods. And the Lord's anger will burn against you and will quickly destroy you. God was not going to put up with that from the Israelites. He had worked and established them as his people. He was giving them a promised land flowing with milk and honey, and he wanted them to stay pure. In verse 5, he says, This is what you are to do to them. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, cut down their Asherah poles, and burn their idols in the fire. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth, to be his people, his treasured possession. The Israelites, at this point in the history of mankind, was God's chosen people, his precious possession, 
Today, we as Christians, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, we have been grafted into the branch. We're part of that family. We are now God's chosen people. These words apply to us today. He wants us to remain pure and separate from the other religions in the world. He does not want us intertwined with these other beliefs because it keeps us from worshiping him, the one true God, as we should worship him and be loyal to him and him alone. Verse 7, the Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors, going back to Abraham and even further, he, it says that, um, that, that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you for the land, from the land of slavery when he redeemed them from Egypt, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. This is speaking as much to us today as it was to the Israelites that were in the wilderness with Moses' leadership of that day. God was telling his people then that he was going to stay true to his covenant, that if they would worship him and follow him alone, then he would be faithful to them and he would bless them and he would take care of them and he would be their God for eternity. That is exactly what God has told us through his son, Jesus Christ. For those who accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord, we are his family. We are going to be with him for eternity uh, because of what Christ did for us on the cross. Verse 10 says, But those who hate him, he will repay to their face, to their face by destruction. He will not be slow to repay to their face those who hate him. God's not going to put up with those. He didn't in that day and he will not today. Those who hate God. He will bring them down. He will destroy the wickedness. Verse 11, therefore, take care to follow the commands, decrees, and laws I give you today. So this was a direct command to the people from God on how they were to stay separate for God, not to intermingle with the other uh, nations or the other tribes that are already in the promised land. They were to drive them out. They were to destroy them. There was to be nothing left of them. They were to wipe out all of their altars, all of their Asherah poles, everything that had to do with false religion, they were to destroy. God wanted his people to stay pure and faithful to him without anything around that would interfere with that relationship. That is what God wants from us today. I want to just bring in a passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 6 to show that it connects with Christians today. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 and following, it says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. Now, most people take this in relationship of a marriage, but I believe it goes much deeper than that. I believe it goes with any relationship that we have in life. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Baal? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. It's not they will be my people. It is that, that they, those who are saved, will be my people, God's people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate. Come out from them and be separate. Separate yourselves from these false believers in the world, those who do not know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Should a, should a Christian marry a lost person? No. No way should a Christian marry a lost person. It goes on to say, uh, uh, and it says, Come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now this passage, of the last part, was Jesus was Paul quoting from a passage in Isaiah. But it just shows you how the Old Testament is, is not connected, that it is connected to today. It's not something of the past. 
God has always had a people. He has always wanted his people to be pure and faithful and true to him and to him alone. That is exactly what God wants today from his people. And his people today are are those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And he does not want his people mixed up in the things of this world. We should not be connected to those who are worshiping false gods. Now, that doesn't mean that their false god has to have a name. It doesn't have to be Buddha, and it doesn't have to be uh, Muhammad, not Muhammad, but any of the other false gods. It could be the god of money. It could be the god of sex. It could be the god of, uh, of uh, power, whatever it is. We as Christians should not be connected to people that are chasing false gods. That should not be a part of our lives because it could draw us in to that. We could become like who we are associating with, and we could put these things or those other false gods ahead of our one true God. And God does not want that. So this was a powerful lesson today that Moses was teaching to the Israelites, getting them ready before they go into the promised land. God's telling them there's going to be other people there but they worship other gods. You've got to get rid of them. I will give you the power over them, and you will be victorious over them. So God was letting the people know that he wanted them to stay true and pure to him and to him alone. And that is what God expects from us today. Would you join me as we close in prayer? Father, thank you today for allowing us to look again at your word and for the power of your word, Lord, and how it is relative to today. Help us, Lord, to look at our lives and say we, where we have uh, allowed the things of this world to infiltrate our, our beliefs and our worship of you. Lord, where have we allowed false gods and false worship to enter into our lives? Help us to see that and help us to get rid of it in our lives so that we can worship you as you want us to worship you. Father, we love you and we thank you for all the blessings you give us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I look forward to continuing our study in Deuteronomy.